Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope everyone's doing pretty damn good out there. I'm doing pretty damn good myself. So right now the Kramer build is kind of a little bit on a halt. I'm waiting for some parts to come in. Uh, the tuners have not showed up. They're coming from New Hampshire and it looks like some of the storms that were coming through here from, I guess, the, uh, uh, I don't know, the hurricanes or whatever was going on end up slowing down the mail so i gotta wait on those i end up placing another order for a new set and they're coming from california hopefully the fires and shit that's going on out there doesn't prolong those from getting here so sooner or later a set of tuners are going to show up but in the meantime i want to try to keep myself busy and uh do some stuff so i have the chinese les paul custom whatever you want to call it guitar sitting in front of me which uh to be honest like i said in my previous video about this guitar i'm really not that impressed with certain things about it but those certain things were fixable and uh so yeah so some of you guys were kind of like saying about how epoxy crazy i've been lately and you damn right because this stuff is my personal opinion about the epoxy resin, especially what I've been using and the experience that I've been having with it, uh, the stuff is very durable. The epoxy resin adds a lot of depth to whatever it's being poured on. So if you have something with a lot of wood grain, if you have something that's got some really beautiful figuring in the wood, um, it adds some depth to it. It gives it like, uh, oh man... I, I want to say almost like like putting a magnifying glass on top of it and even though it's not really magnifying anything it's just the whole all around uh visual of how it it's of what it does when you pour it on something it, it's just unreal like this guitar here all right now this had a basic clear coat on it okay probably a lacquer clear coat um not too sure. Uh, I know when I wet sanded it, I did get a little bit of a uh, odor of, maybe, maybe probably was lacquer, but uh, you know the coloring that is in the actual inlay on the dragon didn't kind of pop out the way it's popping out now. I mean, this is just unreal as far as how it's coming out, and that's why I like about this epoxy resin same thing if you put it on top of something with a quilted maple or even a flame maple it really brings out the wood grain the uh figuring in it and everything else now i've used this several times on other guitars and uh this is the second time that i've actually coated a whole guitar body in epoxy resin like i did with the while the in the box is custom Kramer. Usually I just coat the top. Now with this thing here, I'm going to show you a few little tricks that uh, you can use for yourself to kind of help you guys out when putting on the epoxy resin and basically the finishing of it. Now, even though this has got an arch top on it, all right, the resin didn't kind of spread out across the arch and end up pulling around the sides it layered itself on top of the areas that are humped up and gravity took over but the epoxy resin curing was faster than gravity this stuff does level itself out now this has not been sanded or buffed or level sanded or nothing this is basically raw right now and if you can get if i can get it into light a little bit you can kind of see the reflection or glares from moving it around and seeing that you know it may look like it's completely flat it's just a little bit on the wavy side it's all depends on how fast it cured as it was kind of leveling itself out sometimes you can get this stuff to where it just comes out like glass sometimes if maybe you got too much hardener inside there uh it, the curing process may start a little bit quicker than what the uh the actual layout is going to be and some people do a thing which i noticed online too is that uh 
watching how they do tables and stuff. They'll let the epoxy resin sit after mixing to kind of get the bubbles to come to the top of the surface that from, from mixing. And uh, it starts to do its thing in the mixing cup before you pour it on, which helps out, like I said, with the bubbles and stuff, but you gotta work very quickly. I don't like working like that. I like to be able to have some control over it. I can always remove bubbles with either a torch or a torch lighter, which works out pretty good. This stuff is not flammable. All right, so I don't remember which guitar came first, if I did the Angel guitar or the Cyborg guitar in epoxy resin first. So I'm going to start off with the Angel guitar. The Angel guitar was kind of a uh, I don't know what to do creation. And when I did the build, uh, I was pretty much stumped of, you know, what to put on it. I wanted to do some type of artwork really had no idea what I was going to do and I think somebody came up with an idea I started looking at uh, stained glass on the guitars and seeing how it was done and uh, you know trying to attempt it myself and it worked out pretty damn good so what I ended up doing is routing out for the wings uh, in the body so the wings are embedded in epoxy resin and under the wings is basically epoxy resin as well. I filled up the chambers that I uh, routed out. There is a, uh, a foil tape inside of the chamber and LED lighting. So the foil tape basically reflects the LED lighting so I can get a little bit of an even glow on the wings when the switch was turned on and I ended up putting a 9 volt battery with a couple of resistors on there to dumb down the uh, voltage to the LEDs so I didn't either burn out the LEDs or have any other problems with it. The next one is the well it's a cyborg and this one here I had a lot of fun doing and uh, what I ended up doing with it is routing out the uh, two cavities and putting in old computer board and uh, one thing I found out though is that you have to be careful when uh, coating electronics in epoxy resin. A friend of mine has this guitar right now and I'd done this guitar I don't know how many years ago the completion of it and you know ask him how's how's the sideboard and he says it's just the way it was when you first gave it to me. So, next we have the what did I call this? The Den Man, right? Yeah, that's what it was. The Den Man guitar. Now, this is the picture of the before I ended up putting the epoxy resin on there. So when this guitar here, I ended up uh, drilling out some holes and flesh mounting some uh, bullet ends in there. I ordered a bunch of spent bullet shelves and cut them down the size and ended up embedding them inside of the uh, body and also the neck and then on the neck I just put like a drop of epoxy resin on top of it if it soaked into where the opening was or if there was a little bit of a hollow spot you know I just added a little bit of more epoxy resin to it that cured right up uh, but yeah this is another example of you know embedding or putting something in a finish uh, before you put the epoxy resin on afterwards you know this body did not get stained on the top of it this top is natural so you can see the difference between how you know a dry piece of wood uh and then putting the epoxy resin on resin on, uh, resin on it and then how it's giving it uh some depth to the actual uh figuring inside the uh smolten maple this came out really nice and uh i was really happy the way it turned out and, and the artwork and everything on it so that's just some of the stuff that I got into as far as epoxy resins go. And if you have the skill and you have the tools, anything is possible. You can kind of take it as far as you want to go. Uh, hell, even make a whole body out of epoxy resin, which people have done. So what I got going on over here that I kind of want to show you guys is a little bit of tricks that I end up doing with the body, um, especially a Les Paul style body where it's got the tunematic and the tailpiece. Now I mask off uh, all the areas that I don't want epoxy resin to get into. Sometimes the epoxy resin kind of creeps around that masking tape and you may get a little bit embedded in some area. 
don't worry. I mean, that's why you have drills. That's why you have, you know, certain types of wood carving tools that have a blade on them that you can actually remove that. It's a little bit of work. It's a little bit hard, but it's not that bad. Now, anytime you mask up around something uh, when you're using epoxy, you get like a kind of like a buildup up against that masking tape and it causes you to have like a little bit of a lip around you know everything that was masked off pretty easy fix to get rid of that now if you have a top on your body that is pretty much in in mint shape as far as the way it laid out and you don't want to do any buffing you don't want to do any type of a uh, a sanding or polishing or anything else this surface here like i said it's a little bit on the wavy side. If I bring the fluorescent lighting in or the LED lighting in there and I kind of move it around a little bit, I can kind of see a little bit of it. I don't like that. I want it to be nice, flat, like if it was sprayed on, not poured on. So if you want to get rid of those lips, uh, you can't really put your rings around here because you know they're not going to fit because of that edges on there. So what I end up doing first is I take a file. All right, doesn't matter, you know, what type of file that you have, but it does matter how you use the file. Well, this file I've been using on the Kramer, I can't tell. So I got a lip around here. I want to get rid of it. I want to knock it down. All right, since this area is going to be kind of covered, uh, I don't have to worry about the uh, finish that's going into the lip. What, what I want to do is I want to knock that lip down. So I take the file, since this is a good air, open area over here, put it on a nice angle and kind of like... Get rid of get rid of that lip a little bit and you want to go evenly with it because if you don't you're going to end up uh, having a nice wave over here as well so when you put your ring back on for your pickup your mounting ring you know you're going to see that it's not going to fit right because the pickup rings are arched with the body of a last paul so what i'm doing is just knocking that down Instead of using sandpaper, and I can do the whole area here. And if I want, I can finish this off with the 1500 grit sandpaper, 2500 grit sandpaper, 3000 grit sandpaper, and it'll buff out like if it wasn't even there. Doing it wet sanding, so you got to be careful because it says wood. Wood does absorb water. So what I end up use, would use if there's uh, you know open bare wood is a mixture of water and alcohol. More alcohol than there is water. The alcohol evaporates a lot faster than water does, and uh, it's not going to really. Your chances are straight water. You'll damage something with the wood possibly your finish especially if there's areas where you didn't put epoxy it can cause the wood to still swell so what i'm going to do is just get rid of that so when i do put my pickup ring on there there's not going to be a lip over there anymore and it's going to be nice and you can't even really tell that i ended up doing that now, for the circles, the holes that are drilled in uh, for the, your tunamac bridge and your tailpiece, well, that I kind of do a little bit different. Now, since your sleeves are under pressure, you know, the finish around that sleeve is also going to cause pressure uh, around it. So what I like to do is I take one of these bits that I use for countersinking, and I'll go around that area. Knock, it knocks down the wall. It also chamfers a little bit on an angle. Now, I don't go into the wood with it. I just go into the finish with it just a little bit. And when you do your sanding or, or buffing and polishing and stuff, they'll sand right out and you won't even know it's there. Your sleeve will sit inside of there and be, you can have it either flush with the body or have it the same way that it was before you took it off where it's a little bit on top of the body. So those are a couple of tricks. Now, if you're doing just a top of a body and you do the masking around the edges with the uh, drip skirt as I call it which is just a built-up layer of masking tape um, 
make sure that masking tape is nice and secure. Otherwise, if it gets, if it starts going through the masking tape, you're going to have an issue where you got finished where you don't want it. And that epoxy is a bitch to remove because you have to sand it off. There's not, no chemical that I know of that will remove it. Uh, from where you don't want it without damaging the surface or finish that's underneath it. So when you're doing anything that is just a straight straight top, you want to mask all the way up to the edge, but not have a overhang on top of that edge. You want to mask right up to it. Now, when you peel your tape off, you may feel that there is a little bit of a rough edge or something. 1500 grit sandpaper just around that edge and it'll end up removing it and it won't feel rough. It'll be nice and smooth. So that's another trick you can use for when you're doing this. Now this body, this top has only had one pour on top of it. So I've only put one layer of epoxy resin on there and it's got a good, um, uh, shit, maybe a 16th of an inch. Can't count this because there's a lip on that side, but it's probably a sixteenth of an inch thickness on the top of this body right now. And what I like about it too is that it didn't kind of spread out and just pull on the sides and build up around the sides and stuff. That's why when using one of these uh, adhesive applicators, you know, you've got teeth on the side over here that are really small. You got a large side, you got a medium size, and then you have actually just a scraper. You know, I will use anywhere between the medium and the small size, depending on how thick I want that top to be. On this one here, I believe I used the medium size on there, so I didn't have to kind of reapply unless I noticed some issues with the finish or um, I wanted to build it up to a very, very thick layer, kind of like what I did with the Kramer. The Kramer, I wanted to build that layer up on there. I can control how thick the, that layer is by sanding it down. That body being a um, particle board or no, uh, plywood, not particle board. Uh, being a plywood body, I don't want any moisture or anything to happen with that body to where it cracks or do, does anything anymore. Uh, coating that thing in epoxy resin the way I did uh, just was extra insurance as far as uh, how much epoxy I used on that. So this thing here, I have to drill out the holes for the uh, controls. I have to drill out the hole for the uh, three-way switch. Now, what I ended up doing is I put tape behind there. You know, make sure it's very tight and very secure around that hole so nothing drips in there. Again, if it gets in there, it's going to be a bitch to get out. So... I'm not going to drill these out until after I get done doing a wet sanding on the top. Again, you know, use very lightly with the water, more alcohol than water. I don't want to drill these guys out. Water will drip inside there. The finish that's inside there, may be, the wood inside there may be finished or not, depending on the type of build it is. And, you know, even though um, it's still finished, when you drill, you know, it's possibly you're going to expose wood and, you know, the other side is going to start swelling up, not so much the top, but the back of it. So I'll leave the epoxy inside there until I actually finish this top. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to finish all this up and then fit my rings around there um, and then go ahead and start doing the wet sanding on this thing afterwards. All right, so I removed the little wall that was over here from the masking tape and the epoxy butting up against it. So now it's kind of a lot more flatter and there is no more of a tall lip there. So now when I do the wet sanding of this, um, it's not gonna take me forever to knock that down. But I'm gonna get rid of all of the powder that's inside here because if that stuff gets inside of your controls, if it lingers around inside of the chambers of your body after you put it together, uh, it could damage causing malfunctions as far as your volume and tone controls and possibly your three-way switch. So that's all got to be removed. So I've been feeling around the body over here with my hand. Now, doing body and fender work, you kind of use a lot of your hands as your eyes as well because you can't really see uh, what your hands can feel. So if you're going to go around something and kind of feel it, I don't recommend going this way with it. I always kind of go a little bit on the side of it. We use the angle of my hand to do this. And I can kind of feel, you know, if there's any little bit of waves. And it's very minute as far as the waviness goes. I could almost get away with not even 
doing a level sanding on this but I want to kind of flatten out these edges around here and uh, you know so I'm going to do a little bit of a wet sanding maybe it's not so much around the body area here but more can more focus on this area here than anything else but again you know fluorescent lighting and you know if you have any type of other type of a uh, LED lighting and stuff like that um, just following the light itself going up and down the body the glare of it the reflection of it and you can kind of see uh, what's going on in the finish if your hands can't see it or feel it so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to cut the video short as far as this goes right now and uh, probably just turn in for the night watch a little TV and turn in for the night maybe end up having a uh, small salad or something so I'm going to take off. You guys have a good one. Uh, you know, it's Friday. Enjoy your guys' weekend. And uh, hopefully I get some parts in. I hope.